this is Cave Cat again with the next episode of Cave Cat's Movie and TV Reviews. Today, we're going back to 1991, back when Nickelodeon had begun to introduce animated programming to audiences. There were three animated shows that first premiered on Nickelodeon, becoming known as Nicktoons, those three shows being Doug, The Ren and Stimpy Show, and Rugrats. For today's episode, I will be reviewing one of those three shows, which is Rugrats. Rugrats was first created by Arlene Klasky, Gabor Chupo, and Paul Germain, and produced by the former two's animation studio, Klasky Chupo, as a part of Nickelodeon, as I've explained before. So anyway, the show follows the adventures of a band of babies, led by one Tommy Pickles, as they go through life going on their own adventures, and often facing situations that they're not old enough to properly understand yet. Even in spite of the simple concept of seeing the world from a baby's point of view, this is actually a pretty fun show, for the most part. You really get to see all the antics and escapades that the main babies really get themselves into, thanks to their limited understanding of the world around them. And as for the main babies, we have Tommy himself, who's supposed to be the leader of the group and is rather adventurous and brave. Next is Chucky Finster, Tommy's best friend who is a year older than he is, so technically he's actually a toddler rather than an actual baby. But anyway, he's basically the shaggy of the group, being that he's rather cowardly and apprehensive, but can be brave and assertive when push comes to shove. Next, we have Phil and Lil DeVille, who are twins that share the same interests, namely eating gross things like worms and bugs, at least until All Grown Up came along, but we'll talk about that a little later. Next, there's Angelica, Tommy's older cousin who is rather bratty, selfish, and prone to using trickery and manipulation in order to try and get what she wants. But despite all this, she is capable of having a good heart, especially having a soft spot for her beloved Cynthia doll, in almost a similar fashion as Garfield having a soft spot for his teddy bear Pookie. The parents of the main babies are also pretty fun characters as well. We've got Stu and Dee Dee Pickles, who are Tommy's parents, with Stu being an eccentric inventor and Dee Dee being a doting and loving mother. Chas Finster, who is the single father of Chucky, where we later find out during the second film that Chucky's biological mother died sometime before the series first started. But despite this, Chas still loves Chucky no matter what. Howard and Betty DeVille are the parents of Phil and Lil, but they don't really have much personality, though. Then we have Drew and Charlotte Pickles, who are Angelica's parents, with Drew being the older brother of Stu, while his wife Charlotte is a businesswoman who tends to put work before her family, with some exceptions. Of course, as the seasons of the show went on, we're introduced to more recurring characters, such as Susie Carmichael, who was introduced in the third season, as well as being the first African-American character to appear in the series, Dill Pickles, Tommy's younger brother, who was introduced in the Rugrats movie, and began appearing in the series starting with the late season 5 episode Chucky's Duckling, and especially Kimmy, who became Chucky's younger adoptive sister in Rugrats in Paris, before she too also began appearing in the series, starting with the season 7 episode, Angelicon. To tell you the truth, I only remember seeing the first four seasons of the show on Nickelodeon, and I never really got to watch the remaining episodes that featured Dill or Kimmy. Anyway, the show is pretty decent with pretty likable characters, and while the plots of the episodes seem pretty simple and basic for the most part, they're actually pretty fun, with some exceptions. Some episodes of the series are really fun, such as Graham Canyon, where Tommy and Angelica, along with Stu and Dee Dee, travel to the Grand Canyon, Ice Cream Mountain, where the babies accompany Stu and Drew to the mini golf course in search of the elusive Ice Cream Mountain, and several others. Of course, when the show first premiered on Nickelodeon, it was the most popular show that ever aired on the, Nickel on the network, alongside Doug and Ren and Stimpy, even getting three theatrical films, which are the Rugrats movie, Rugrats in Paris, and Rugrats Go Wild, the latter being a crossover film with the Wild Thornberries, another Nickelodeon show created by Klasky Chupo. Yeah, Rugrats was the most popular animated show on Nickelodeon for years, until SpongeBob SquarePants came along and ended up surpassing it in terms of popularity, to the point that Rugrats ended its run back in 2004. Though a year before that, it did get a spin-off series known as All Grown Up, which focused on Tommy and the gang as preteens going to school and dealing with everyday slice-of-life situations, like another Klasky Chupo show as told by Ginger would also do. To tell you the truth, I never saw All Grown Up because I just, could, I just could never really get into it, due to the fact that I was more into Digimon Frontier around that time. 
But anyway, regarding that fact, there isn't really much more for me to say about Rugrats, except for the fact that I will give it seven and a half stars. No, I do not have plans to watch that 2021 Rugrats series, because it just looks awful in CGI, despite staying true to the original character designs. It's like what I said before, franchises that have been rendered in 2D for so long will either look really good or really bad in CGI, depending on the art style. And in this case, even though the reboot of Rugrats stays true to the art style, it still looks terrible animated in CGI, even worse than Alvin and the Chipmunks. Also, as I've explained before, there are exceptions where the franchise looks pretty good when animated in CGI, like Garfield, which I talked about previously. It all depends on how, on how the art style of the franchise looks to make it more succinct. Well, anyway, that's it for this episode of Cave Cats Movie and TV Reviews. As I keep saying before, don't forget to like and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos from me. So until next time, later!